Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. It's the fifth Sunday of Pentecost. It amazes me how quickly all these weeks are going by in June, and we all survived the heat wave that we had, and we were blessed with that beautiful rain, rain this morning. We have a lot to be grateful for. This past week, we learned of the passing of Reverend Paul Milheim, who served here at Good Hope. Uh, Mark Milheim is still in the area, his son. But I thought it was important that before we start our worship today that we just take a moment of silence gratitude for the leaders of the church that have led Good Hope over the years and give thanks to God for the life of Reverend Paul. So let us just take that moment. Amen. And with our hearts ready to worship, please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We are so grateful you are here joining us in worship, and let's fill the walls today singing hymn 400, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray together the prayer of the today. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Job chapter 38. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determines its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched it, the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? when the morning stars sang together, and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors, when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall you proud waves stop. Word of God, word of life. <laughs> A responsive reading from Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe, gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, plying their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. Then God spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths. Their souls melted away in their peril. They staggered and reeled like drunkards, and all their skills was of no avail. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper, and silenced the waves of the sea. Then, they were, then were they glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people, in the council of the elders. Let them sing, Alleluia. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now it is the acceptable time. See, now it is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We're asking all the youth to come forward today for a blessing of your talents and gifts. 
and your hobbies and the way you're spending your time this summer. You may see them displaying what they are going to be uh, spending a lot of time thinking about doing. Yep, come on up. <laughs> it's great to see all of you today. Oh, good. <laughs> I love this. This is good. Seth and Drew, and let's see who else is here. Come on up. I need your help. <laughs> You see, it's the older youth that come up and tell us, uh, and all the Amen girls come on up. <laughs> I know you don't want to, but this is when you can't say no to the pastor. <laughs> Kyle <laughs> and Lily, come on down. And Nate, oh yes. Who else do I need to call, Lauren? <laughs> come on down and, and share up front all the way. Just line up here so everyone can see you. you oh, Nora's here. We've got the whole crew here. Uh, and girls that are playing piano, you're welcome to come up today for a blessing. It's okay if you don't, but we are blessing you because we're so very thankful you're here today. Why would we do this? Why do we bring you up here with all of your time and your talents and the gifts that you have? It's because uh, you are given these extra special gifts from God to share with the world. And it's worth the blessing. Plus, it helps us to know so that your whole family here can keep you in their prayers, in our prayers, uh, throughout your lives. It's part of the whole baptism process. It's living out your baptism. So today, what we're going to do is have you go up to the, the baptismal font. I want you to take your fingers and put your hands firmly in that water and put a cross on your head and say, I'm a child of God. And then you will go over to the microphone and you will share just maybe one or two things that you are here wanting us to bless or wanting us to know how you're spending your summer days. Um, and the main thing is, is that everything you do, you are a child of God and God sees you. So how you conduct yourself matters. How you treat your animals if you're going to the fair matters. How you treat your teammates when you're out on the field or on the court or in the baseball uh, dugout, it all matters. So this is why we celebrate baptism throughout your life. It's not just that first time that you have the blessing of God on your forehead. You are marked with the cross of Christ and sealed by the Holy Spirit forever. And so it's a good memory. So um, Seth, just because, uh, let's make you and Nate first, because, and then are you the two oldest? Le well, Lily then. We can go oldest to youngest if you guys can figure this out. So you just put your hand in the water and say, I'm a child of God. <laughs> and then tell us, Nate, you can come up. <laughs> okay. <But. laughs> yeah, so I have five fair animals that I won't bless today. <laughs> Uh, this summer, I'm going to be uh, working on restoring my tractor. This summer, I am working towards my college endeavors. <laughs> uh, this summer, me and my sister are doing a 4-H project. <laughs> I'm working on my 4-H projects. Uh, to bless my two fair cows that are at home right now. <laughs> to help me with my running season. To work on my fair animals. To work on my fair animals. to play football. Baseball. Yeah. Drawing. Eva is going to practice her ballet dance. <laughs> <laughs> I 
can I can say baseball. Nora's working on swimming in the pool and banging every musical instrument she can get her hands on. <laughs> Past month, we have really uh, concentrated on our vacation Bible school verse, which is to strive for the things that brings God peace and build each other up. And then, of course, we do Romans 14, 19 at the end of that. But that's what we are so happy that you are out in the community and sharing God's love through all of the things that God has given you to share. And so we are going to give you a high five down the alley. Anybody that wants to come down the aisle and give them a high five. Uh, when you say a high five, you're saying, I'm a child, I'm a child of God. Remember that when you are working in your life, times get tough, God's always with you. So, Abby, just start. We'll make this quick. Our hands are out. Go. I'm a child. Oh, just make it fast, everybody. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. <laughs> You're a child of God. Yay. I think we should be clapping. <laughs> a child of God. <laughs> child of God. <laughs> and somebody give Nora a high five as she walks by there. <laughs> What a blessing you are to our community and what hope you give to all of us. Uh, God be with you as you do that. Let's stand for the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter, verses 35 through 41. Glory to you, O Lord. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke Jesus up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Jesus woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated because we are especially blessed today to have two young pianists uh, who were born here earlier this, uh, this summer. They are students of uh, Diana Verse and her daughters, and we are so very thankful that they are sharing their talents.
Oh, thank you for that beautiful music that was calming of the storm uh, as uh, we are talking about today. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we have all experienced some kind of storm in our life. Whether it's been physical past uh, the past year has certainly brought us into a lot of those hard thunderstorms, tornado ideas, sirens, and everything going off. Yes, so we all understand what that is. Uh, but the older you get, you realize there are so many different storms in our life that we come into. Usually when everything is going really good, we like to take credit for it ourselves and just enjoy life, thinking that we've achieved something. It's not usually the time when we ask God, why, where are you? It's during the storms when things are just in chaos and we don't understand it, that we're always saying, where are you, God? Why is this happening? We are always searching for the meaning of life. And that's what today's Gospels are all about. And the readings from Job, I just love that reading from Job 38. Uh, Job is asking God questions and God is just answering him exactly who God is. So take it home this week and read through it. It is always good to read through the book of Job. But I wanted to tell you a story about um, a really brilliant ethicist. His name was John Cavanaugh. Uh, the story is told through the book of Ruthless Trust. This man, John, went to work for Mother Teresa for three months at the house of the, of the, the, house of the dying in Calcutta. Now just think of spending three months of your life in a place that's called the house of the dying. He's looking for clear answers how to spend the rest of his life. That's what he's hoping to find there. So the first morning, Mother Teresa greets him and says, what can I do for you, John? And he replies, I'd like you to pray for me. And Mother Teresa says, well, absolutely. What can I pray for you? And he said, I want clarity. Mother Teresa says, no, I will not pray for clarity. That is something that you are clinging on to that you must let go. Now, can you imagine his surprise of Mother Teresa saying, I will not pray for you to have clarity. And he goes, but Mother Teresa, I long for the clarity that you show in everything that you've done. I long to be like that. And she breaks out laughing. And she says, John, I have never had clarity. But what I have always had is trust. So I will pray for you to trust God. I love that story because so many times when we're asking why, we want the answers right now. But what Mother Teresa is saying directly from reading the Bible and living a life of faith is that we never really know exactly why we're on this side of heaven, but we just trust. And living in that trust is what the story is about today. Now I love talking to you about this story. It's one of my favorites, and I'm sure you've heard it before, how Jesus calms the storm. And it even has become familiar and maybe not even interesting because, of course, do we believe Jesus is strong enough to, to calm a storm? Is he weak or strong? Oh, yes. <laughs> and I would like you to answer that. I just want to see if you're awake. Is Jesus weak or strong? Ah, oh, yes, he is. And we know that. But do the disciples know that? And that is why Jesus is this brilliant teacher that we could take so many lessons for. He doesn't just come out and say to everybody, hey, look, I'm the Messiah, I'm gonna save you, and this is how it's gonna work. He doesn't show them right away. Instead, Jesus involves 
everyone around him to experience a moment that will give that trusting ability to follow him. So, a couple of things that you need to know before we get into the story is when you read about water and the sea in the Bible, it's usually about monsters and demons and chaos. The waters represent that in the ancient times. And so in this story, that's important to know. And it's also important to know that when they talk about a boat in the Bible, they're usually talking about the church. Many churches are even constructed that the ceiling looks like a boat. So if you visit other churches or you follow that one guy that's always on Facebook taking beautiful pictures of churches, look at the ceilings. They're boats. We're right in with Christ. Christ may be asleep, but he's in our boat. We hear about the waters in chaos time right at the very beginning of the Bible in Genesis. The spirit is hovering over it. Creation is giving order and peace to the water as God speaks into the world creation. And then you have to understand the Exodus story. And we talk about this in confirmation a lot, so I'm just going to review it. You know, we as Christians understand that Easter is the biggest story. It is the foundation of our Christian faith of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, crucified, died, and risen on the third day, and sits at the right hand of God. We say that in our creed purposely to tell you this is the most important thing to remember. During the Jewish times that these disciples are living in, the story that was the big story of their faith was the Passover. And if just a real quick review, it's when Pharaoh was ruling in Egypt and the Israelites were slaves. They were less than human to Pharaoh. They just wanted those people to build all of their big stone um, monstrosity buildings and they didn't care whatever happened to them. Pharaoh even ordered for the firstborn to be killed. And God watched. And he saw Moses and he said, I want you to go, Moses, there with Aaron, your brother. And I want you to tell him to let those people go. Now, it takes 10 times for Moses to convince Pharaoh to let them go. The 10 plagues, remember those stories. And finally, on the 10th time, Pharaoh decides, I will let the Israelites go. And as the Israelites are just millions, thousands of them, even some that aren't the Jewish slaves, there were more people that joined that just wanted to escape the Egyptians. They come out of Egypt, and they're walking towards the desert to their promised land. They're not in an army style. It is chaos. They're just moving as people are moving all of their stuff. That's got to be scary. But they trusted Moses to do this. So here you are. You're there. And you're at the campsite. And then all of a sudden you look up and you see the Egyptian army coming for you. And you think you're going to die. And this is the part of the story that Jesus wanted to make sure that the disciples recalled. Moses says, today you will see the salvation of Yahweh. Do not be afraid. Those are pretty powerful words for Moses to speak. And Moses lifts up his staff and the waters split and divide and there is a pathway. The Psalms all speak of this over and over. If you ever read through the Psalms, you're going to hear about the God that rebukes the wind and the sea and the storms. It's big in the Bible to know that story. And Jesus knows his disciples know that story. Only Yahweh, only God could speak to the water and divide it. Fast forward. Here we are. Jesus is in his ministry. He has been teaching with all of the crowds following him. He's tired. He's human. And he has performed miracles. He gets in a boat 
because he just needs some space from the crowds. And he tells his disciples, let's just cross the lake. And so the disciples get in the boat with him. And while they're in this boat, a big storm comes up, which is very normal in the Sea of Galilee, but is very dangerous. It still happens today. There's the desert hot winds and the cool winds coming down from the cliffs that cause this great whirlwind. Where's Jesus? As you see in this Rembrandt painting, if you can pick it out, Jesus is way up here in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. And I wanted this picture so you could see the tiny little boat was only 25 feet. We're not talking about a yacht where Jesus is underneath. He's feeling the, the wind and the rain on his face, just like everything else, but he's asleep. And if you could pull this up even closer so you could see the looks of the people in the boat, they are terrified. They're scared. They're fishermen. It's like being on an airplane and all of a sudden you hear your pilot getting scared. That's when you know there is something dangerously wrong. The fishermen are scared. And they go to Jesus. Do you not care that we are perishing? They don't say help. They're mad at Jesus. How could you not care that we are right here and we're going to die? <laughs> and see, this is the part of the story. Jesus sits up and he looks at the wind and he goes, stop. And he looks at the waves and he goes, be still. Now we don't usually think that's a really big deal, but can you imagine being there and all of a sudden, this guy that you have been walking around with and watching perform miracles, yes, you knew there was something special about him. There was something divine. He was a prophet of some kind. And people had come to him looking for the answers. But right in front of them, they just realized something. Only God rebukes the sea. Only God can stop the wind. And it just happened right here in front of us. Tim Mackey of the Bible Project says, it's like being 40 years old and finding out that your dad is Superman. It's like you can't believe this. They're right there, they're looking at Jesus and realizing, oh my goodness, God is in this man. This Christ has God's power in him. He has the power the strength, the wisdom, and the protection. And this calming storm all of a sudden becomes extremely terrifying awe. Do we ever experience that today when we even think of Jesus? Do we think of this story and say, yes, God has this power. God is with us. And when we're asking, where are you, God? Why? Why is this happening? Jesus is right there with us. And he never leaves us alone. He always knows you're going to be OK. You're never going to perish because I came for you, because I love you. I'm trying to get you to see and to believe and to trust in me. And they did trust a little because when Jesus said, let's cross the lake to go to the other side, they did. They didn't know why. But every time in the Bible when there's a storm on the, lake, the Sea of Galilee, it's when Jesus is taking the Jewish people to the Gentiles, to the unchurched. It's taking a risk to go out and beyond. Now that's a lesson in itself, isn't it? I don't think Jesus wants us to be comfortable. I think Jesus wants us to go, to speak to the unchurched, to speak and tell the stories of, of the awesomeness. That's what Mark is trying to tell us. This was Jesus sitting right here. And that gives us hope and trust forever. Rembrandt does this in such a beautiful way that there is light in the darkness. There was no light out there on that sea. It was completely dark. 
But when there's light, there's hope. And Rembrandt wanted you to know in this painting that Jesus has hope. And if you look at the, the picture, you see a cross. It's the story of the resurrection right here. That Jesus takes all the sin, all the evil, is more powerful than anything and will always have the final word. And that is the good news of Jesus calming the storm. It goes way beyond the boat. It comes right here to the church. And Jesus is saying to us, why are you so afraid? Do you, not, do you have such little faith? Go, share the gospel, tell the good news. Don't hold back. I'm with you and there will be suffering. Absolutely there will be. For all the young kids that just came up, we know that life has its challenges. Who knows what will happen to your animal at the fair that may be spooked and to drag you through the arena. I've seen it happen before. God's with you. God will be with you forever. So whatever storms you have in your life, whether it's loss of loved ones, loss of relationships, loss of jobs, loss of money, reputation, you're holding on to shame and guilt, Jesus says, come to me. I'm right here. I never leave the boat. I'm always with you. You can hold me right in your hands when you come to the table. I want to have a center spot in your life. Now the hymn that we're gonna sing following the sermon today is a testimony of someone who actually experienced this. And I'm sure you've heard the story before, but the man who penned these words in 1800 had lost everything, his firm in the Chicago fire. His son had died. And so he sends his wife and his four daughters to England. He doesn't know what else to do. There's no place for them to be. So he sends them to England on a boat. His wife wires him and says, all is lost. What do I do? The ship that they were on had problems. They were sinking and the four daughters drowned. So the man gets on another ship and he goes, I'm coming. And as he approaches this spot where the accident happened, the captain stops the ship and said, would you like to have a moment? And this overwhelming peace came to him as he wrote these words. And that's why when we hear this song, it is not just a prayer, it's a testimony, it's the story of Jesus. So as we sing it, pray it, believe it, trust in it. Our God is with us always. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, a holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come together for prayer. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Equip your faithful people to approach the world with a sense of wonder. Make your church a safe place to explore big questions, troubling doubts, and honest laments. Humble our hearts to repent of the ways that communities of faith have inflicted pain or trauma. You spoke creation into the order from the chaos of swirling deep. May your name be praised by the rivers and seas, the wetlands and waterfalls. Secure clean water for all people and protect water resources from contamination or exploitation. Amid whirlwinds of division and violence and conflict, remind us again that you are as steadfast as the foundations of the earth. Rejuvenate peacemakers, advocates, and community organizers when you feel weary in their, wor in their work. Deliver your people from their distress, O oh God, for we lift before you all who are sick or struggling especially. We pray for Marge, Heidi, Blanche, Keith, Bruce, Sydney, Nyla, Sean, Joni, Ernie, Kendall, Terry, Frank, John, Cooper, Roseanne, Tim, Amanda, Bill, Ken, Jeanette, Remy, Tom, Maggie, Bonnie, Kathy, and Sean. Grant consolation and peace to all who live with chronic terminal or persistent illness. In times of affliction or hardship, sustain us in faith. Enfold all travelers with your protection. Bless the comings and goings of this assembly as we travel for leisure or for work. Let all journeys be met with hospitality on the way, and let the community members return to us with celebration. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. For all the redeemed of the Lord, join together with the great cloud of witnesses we give thanks for your steadfast love and your wonderful works. And Lord, we pray for the family and friends of Susan Wilson. We pray for the family and friends of Reverend Paul Milheim. We ask you to give comfort and blessings to their family as they grieve. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share the peace of the Lord.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is Christ's table. All are welcome. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come.
you stand and if you feel comfortable holding the hand of the person next to you, please do. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. I have a few announcements today. Um, first of all, uh, council meets on Thursday, and I, I just love it if you would pray for our church council as they have a lot of decisions to make for the life of the church, and you're always welcome to come to the meetings and observe. Uh, we love to have the congregation's full input in how we go about serving our community, our church, and our Lord. On Tuesday night, we are blessed to have with us a synod leader, Chris Fye, who is going to talk about generosity. And you know, of all the things in the world that you could get to talk about, generosity is a pretty good thing. So if you'd like to come and hear uh, someone tell you a little bit how to be more generous, come, 4.30 to 5.30 on Tuesday. Uh, there will be a letter coming out either by MailChimp or we will have copies, hard copies here on the Narthex concerning the update of the storm that hit our church with the steeple and the elevator and um, the roof. It's all kind of slow moving, but we are moving. Uh, and so we try to keep you informed with everything that's going on. Also about putting in a ramp in case the elevator ever stops working. So we are looking far in advance for that. Meanwhile, people are having birthdays that we have to just have the privilege to sing to. So Alan Burkhart is turning older tomorrow, and Sarah Sullivan is also turning older tomorrow. So it's Alan and Sarah. Happy birthday. And hear the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. People of good hope, we are grounded in faith, gathered in love, and sent with a purpose so others may gain the kingdom. And we sing, Jesus is a rock.
in peace. You are the body of Christ. <laughs>